Hello everyone, I welcome you once again to MSB lecture series on advanced transmetallic chemistry. In my previous lecture, uh, after giving introduction to 18 electron rule, I showed you several examples with uh, interesting properties and how you can assess uh, and count and show whether they have 18 electron or not in their valence shell and also whether they satisfy effective atomic number or not. Today let me continue with a few more interesting examples to make you familiar with the electron counting process. I have shown here a structure where 4 atoms are hidden behind this orange spheres and you can see the rest everything is clear. There are quite a few things one can give as hint. If no hints are given and from this one you can see through metal metal bond you should be able to identify the metal despite the total valence electrons present in this cluster is not given. So to begin with let me not give the total valence electrons present in this uh, cluster, but however I say that this cluster satisfies 18 electron rule, then what is the metal atom present in this cluster? So it is very simple except for metal atom rest is known and if you simply start uh, using neutral method or covalent method you should be arrived at the answer to identify the metal atom here. So let us begin. Here let us start with covalent method, according to covalent method C5H5 is giving 5 electrons. So let us begin with one metal center 5 and we have 2 carbon monoxide per metal here because we have 4 carbon monoxides are there totally 8 electron donors but each one should have 2 electron share in that case. So this one. Uh, now we have a total of 7 electrons are there and if we believe that this satisfies 18 electron rule then 18 minus 7 equals uh, 11 now 11 and if it is satisfying 18 electron rule let us detect uh, 3 electrons per each one then it will be 8. So then metal should have 8 electrons if the metal should have 8 electrons first we should put into S2 N plus 1 yes yes 2 and remaining n d now we can put d easily. So that means the metal ion we are talking about should have of course if it is a 3d series it should be 3d 6 and 4 s yes 2 or if it is 4d it, it should be other way around okay it is 4d 6 6s 5s yes 2 and it goes on does not matter. So this is the one and if this is the one means 8 electrons in the valence shell means it goes to the iron group okay if it is 3d it should be iron if it is 4d it should be ruthenium it should be 5d it should be osmium if it is 3d iron 4d ruthenium and 5D osmium. On the other hand, so we can check whether the metal atom is iron or not if it is 3D. On the other hand, if I say this cluster has a total of 60 electrons, identify the metal center. So in this case, what we should do is we have to take 7, 7 we have each one 7 is there, 7 into 4, 28. 28 goes then we have 32, 32 by 4 equals 8. So we are also coming here only. So that means already here uh, the total number of valence electrons present in this cluster is already known given 60 in that case it is 8. So in both ways you should be able to tell but provided uh, if we say that this cluster satisfies 80 electron rule, okay, let us look into it. Yes, iron atom. You can see the, this uh, bonds are there one bond here and uh, two bond here another bond here. So each one is coming. So that means each one has 15 electrons and in order to satisfy 8 electron they establish 3 bonds and you recall when I gave this example here dimer in this case we established 
triple bond between them because here only 2 iron atoms are since we have 4 iron atoms are there we will be establishing single bond each because each iron atom is making 3 bonds with neighboring iron atoms which are arranged in a tetrahedral fashion here you can see this is arranged in tetrahedral fashion. So, this is how 18 electron uh, problems can be solved almost like mathematical puzzles. Then let us go to one more example of course here uh, you just recall uh, MnCO5 if you make that exists as a dimer having this kind of composition. The reason why it will be answered by this uh, example here just look into this one we have 4 carbonyl are there 8 are there and of course this is 3D5 4S2 7 and then this is linear 3 electrons are there so this is 18 electron. Since here in case of carbon monoxide we have a NO and instead of 2 electron donor like CO it is a 3 electron donor. Now it satisfies 18 electron rule that is the reason it does not undergo dimerization. So, this is an 80 electron complex. And now let us look into this one here we have 10 electrons are coming from 5 ammonia molecules by covalent method cobalt has 9 electrons and then N is bent so 1 electron it is giving and uh, 2 charges are there uh, subtract 2 you so you get 18. So, it satisfies 18 electron rule and now let us look into this molecule here again go with covalent method. So, 8 electrons are coming from uh, ruthenium and then one is coming from chlorine and then two or two each coming from uh, two triphenyl phosphine and one is linear three electrons are coming one is bent two electrons are coming. So, we have a total of 18 electron and you go to uh, ionic method same thing happens here also. So, eventually you can use both the methods and you can decide in some cases like here even if the mode of coordination of NO is not given you should be able to tell after electron count that one is linear one has to be bent so that 18 electron rule is satisfied. Now, I have given another similar example here in the compound shown below identify the first row transfer metal that means we have to identify which 3D metal is there uh, in place of M here in this case and then here the total valence electrons are giving. And of course, when total valence electrons are giving you have to keep in mind that you should not count metal metal bond, metal metal bond will not give you extra electrons you have to manage with the electrons by taking from neighboring atom. So, that at a given time each metal center satisfies 18 electron rule that is what I told you I am again stressing upon that one you should remember when we add metal metal bond we will be managing within the electrons present in the valence shell we are not taking extra electrons from anywhere. So, now if this cluster contains 48 electrons we have to identify the metal and now NO uh, let us assume 4 NOs are there 4 NOs will be giving 12 electrons and then we have 3 CP groups are there they are giving 15 electrons. So, it becomes 27 and what we have is 48 48 minus 27 equals 21 because 3 metal centers are there equals 7 if I put S2 here I have to put D5. So, it is D5 S2, D5 S2 means it has to be manganese. Now, if I ask you to state the oxidation state of each metal it is bit tricky here and uh, NO comes as NO plus. So, that basically what happens whatever the electrons they are giving for Cp to make it Cp minus. So, each one is assume each one will be Mn will be in plus 1 state. So, 4 NOs are there 4 NOs are there one will give one electron here another one give another electron here and then the 2 NOs will give 2 electrons to one of the manganese. As a result what happens it becomes Mn0, this becomes Mn0 and then it becomes Mn-1. So, now we know that you can do ionic method to identify the metal here. You should remember if you consider Cp, Cp uh, to become Cp minus manganese has to give one electron it is given here. So, all manganese are in plus 1 state because each one is making a bond with Cp group and now 4 NOs are there. Out of 4 NOs, 2 NOs have to give uh, 2 electrons to one of the metal centers. In that case, let us assume uh, 2 NOs are giving here 
uh, NO, NO and here one NO is giving one electron and one NO is giving one electron. So, it becomes 0, 0 and it becomes minus 1. So, this is how you can also identify the oxygen state by doing a proper counting and through electron counting the way I described using both ionic method as well as covalent method. You can see here I showed whatever uh, I described is here, here. So, two metals have 0 oxygen state and whereas one has minus 1 oxygen state. Now, another interesting one is there uh, RH, Fe, CO5, C7H8 and what is C7H8 also I have shown here cycloheptatriene. Now, if, if a system like this is there, you should assume that there is a metal metal bond and now one metal metal bond is there, but what is interesting is this group is sharing its electrons with both rhodium as well as iron depending upon how many electrons are needed for each one. So, it is very interesting structure I should sh show you here. So, this is how first you should write. You should ask me why I have put uh, only 2 carbon monoxide and rhodium and 3 carbon monoxide on iron. Uh, you should know that iron has less number of electrons compared to rhodium in its valence shell to begin with because iron has 3d6, 4s2 whereas rhodium has 4d7, 5s2. So, already it has the excess electrons. It needs very few electrons to satisfy its actate as a result you have to add more ligands to those which have less electrons in their valence shell. Now, if you start counting here uh, by neutral method 4 electrons are there and 9, uh, 4d, 7, 5s2, 9 and here we have 6 electrons plus 6 we have 9 electrons are there and here 13 electrons are there. So, 13 electrons are there one bond is coming let us say from covalent bond then we have to see how many electrons are needed now. 8 electrons are there here. So, 8 plus 4, 14 electrons are there. Okay. So, now let us put it here in such a way that it can bind to both the rhodium and iron uh, atoms. Now, so what does it show now? You can see one is eta 4, one is eta 3. Now, eta 4 means 4 electrons are coming. So, 13 plus 4, 17 and 1 is coming from this bond and here 3 are there, 14 plus 3, 17. So, another is coming from this one. So, now you can see very nicely. So, that means in order to satisfy a 18 electron uh, rule in this dimeric, uh, in this hetero dimetallic complex cycloheptatriene binds in this fashion having eta 4 towards rhodium and eta 3 towards iron. So, okay, this explains or very nicely and you can see now both the uh, metal atoms are obeying 18 electron rule and this whatever I showed with star this represents metal metal bond. So, now I have one more interesting molecule is there assuming this complex as a neutral one and obeys 8 electron draw the structure right the best possible structure for ruthenium C8 H8 2 that means cycloocta tetraene here we are talking about. If you are taking about cycloocta tetraene and both of them should satisfy and of course ruthenium has 8 electrons are there and uh, ruthenium has 8 electrons what you need is now 10 electrons are needed. If 10 electrons are needed how one can write. So, So, you can 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 are there. If 8 are there, let me see whether I can put bonds like this and also let me write one more 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, something like this. If I put something like this, if, if I take this one and if I take this one it becomes sort of uh, 3 electrons, it, re, it recall it is like a benzene and it is ethylene. So, now I let me try to put in this fashion and this will be eta 6 
and this will be eta 4. So, that means this is giving 6 electrons, this is giving 4 electrons, we have already have 8 electrons are there and 6 electrons are there and 4 electrons are there. So, it satisfies 18 electron rule. That means you should remember you may ask me why it should be eta 8 and eta 2. If you see the structure of cyclotetrine, it is very difficult to take all the 4 to ruthenium because of the orientation of this molecule here. So, it is very difficult as a result what happens? You cannot bind all 4 double bonds to single metal, but this is the most appropriate metal prefers to bind having eta 6 and eta 4 coordination. So, that means one should uh, uh, give some thought and analytically one should try to analyze uh, how one can write a structure without much stress on the molecule, but it satisfies the AT electron rule. This completes the discussion about electron counting and the AT electron rule and effective atomic number. I believe now if any metal complex is given, you should be able to solve it without any difficulty. Now let us move on to another interesting topic called metal metal multiple bonding and I shall tell you in this one the type of metal metal bonds we come across among coordination compounds as well as organometallic compounds and also I shall tell you more about quadrupole and quintuple bonding that means according to the convention we cannot have more than 3 bonds between 2 metal centers. But uh, due to the painstaking work from Cotton's group we came to know that yes metals can have more than 4 bonds or even 5 bonds between 2 metal centers that we call it as quadrupole bonding and quintuple bonding. And if these bonds are there whether we can use molecular orbital theory to explain this bonding is what interesting. I shall tell you in detail to make you very familiar with identifying some of these multiple bonds between 2 metal centers when you come across in coordination chemistry. Let us start discussion. What is uh, you know metal metal multiple bonding? So, metal complexes with metal metal multiple bonds have been known for decades even uh, we while doing electron count also I showed you the existence of metal metal double bond triple bond. But bonds formed by the overlap of valence d orbitals of trans metal ions received greatest attention after the discovery of quadrupole metal metal bonds by F. A. Cotton in 1960s. Cotton's group at MIT, earlier he was a professor at MIT and later he moved to Texas A&M. So, during that time he was interested in rhenium chemistry for which he started working on rhenium salts such as K2REcl4 okay. and one of the Russian scientists earlier that means in 1950s had characterized this compound and composition and he called this one as K2REcl4 salt. Cotton was purchasing rhenium salts from one mining company called Coors in Colorado in USA where the metal was obtained as a side product while mining molybdenum. One such sample having K2REcl4 obtained from Coors group was found to have several crystals suitable for single crystal X-ray structure determination. As a result what happened Cotton performed structure and he determined the structure of the so called K2REcl4. To his surprise and his group surprise the sample was shown to have a stoichiometry of KREcl4 but not K2REcl4 what it was thought earlier and it was found to be a dianion with two RECL4 moieties connected together with a metal metal bond. So, then curiosity was there to think about that one. Before looking into those things while working with uh, rhenium salts, Cotton has solved the structure of this uh, trimeric uh, molecule RE3Cl12 and he found they have double bonds between the metals in this fashion. So, he had prior knowledge of this one. However, Russian group predicted this to be having this kind of composition, but later when they found, they found it as a dianion connected through these rhenium atoms. This is how the structure was found after establishing through single crystal X-ray analysis. It was thought to be monoanionic and then the dimer was dianionic. 
So, the dianion was found to have d4 symmetry you can see from what I showed with the eclipsed tetragonal Cl4 Re ReCl4 planes something like this they are eclipsed and with a very short rhenium rhenium distance of uh, uh, 2.2 angstrong units to support the short rhenium rhenium bond and the eclipse structure the chlorine atoms were found to be bent away from bond with an angle of one not. So, that means they were not exactly like this what happens in order to prevent this kind of they these four uh, went up little bit and then they went down like this in this fashion. So, something like this establishing a bonding of 104 degrees between the metals something like this. So, clearly the eclipse structure appeared to be due to the electronic effects. But if you consider steric consideration staggered would have been much more stable. So, a graduate student of cotton named Charles Harris presented theoretical arguments for a quadruple bond between rhenium atoms. So, that means now uh, they went for bonding concepts how to explain uh, this uh, bonding or short bond between the rhenium atoms using some bonding concepts. So, this is how uh, it was appearing as I mentioned they went up little bit these four uh, to minimize repulsion you should remember the fact that uh, each chlorine has three lone pairs are there and they will be having some repulsive forces to keep them away from this one in the eclipsed configuration they were slightly pulled up and they were slightly pulled down in the structure. Now, let us look into the orbital interactions, the orbital interactions between rhenium centers included a sigma bond formed by overlapping of dz uh, square orbitals from two rhenium atoms and then there were two degenerate pi bonds having the similar or same energy due to the overlapping of dxz and dyz uh, orbitals of two rhenium atoms and a delta bond was established through weak overlapping of dxy uh, from two metal atoms rhenium atoms. In particular positive overlap of the adjacent dxy orbits requires that the tetragonal ReCl4 planes adopt eclipse structure. So, that means I will show you in a couple of minutes or maybe in my next lecture why the square planar uh, units should have an eclipsed configuration not the staggered one. So, d x square by square orbital remains involved with RECL bond formation and hence it does not participate in rhenium rhenium bonding. Since rhenium 3 plus ion has d4 electronic configuration if you consider 4 electrons from each d orbital we have a total of 8 electrons are there these 8 electrons would be occupied to in, in a fashion such as sigma 2 pi 4 and delta 2 so that bond order will be 4. So, I shall give you a clear MO diagram and explain step by step to make you familiar with you know understanding this quadruple bonding concept and also predicting the nature of the metal metal bond in molecules where we have different electronic configurations until then have an excellent time reading chemistry.